it didn't announce that. I think I turned that setting off. That was smart. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm very excited to have Emery Rutledge with us tonight to um, talk with us about some accomplishments that she, as just a young teenager, has been able to, to do. And it's super exciting. But first, I want to ask for those of you that can, if you're in a place that you can, would really love to see your smiling faces. If you can put your cameras on, that'd be great. If you can't, that's okay. Um, because I know you too. Generally, I'll, I have people put their cameras on to make sure that we know and um, everyone that's on, that everyone's safe um, and that we don't have any buddy that's not supposed to be here on, but I know both of you. So if you don't want to turn your cameras on, that's fine. Um, also, if you guys could keep yourselves muted, that way, if you have any dogs or animals or, or side noise in your house, that's not disturbing or disruptive to Emery while she's talking. However, if you have questions, if you can hold them to the end and then unmute yourself then to ask those questions, that would be great. Um, if you don't think you can remember them till the end, if you want to stick them in the chat box and then I can ask them for you at the end. Um, I think that's it as far as housekeeping. Thank you again so much, everybody, for being here. And Emery, for you, thank you for being here tonight. And I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I, who knows you better than yourself, right? And I know that you have a lot of great things to share with us tonight. So I'm going to mute myself and hand it over to you. Thank you for having me and thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm going to see if I can share my screen first and then get into the introduction and everything. Um, can you guys see this? It is starting to pull up slowly. There we go. Thank you. There we go. It's perfect. You're welcome. So most of you already know this. My name is Emery Rutledge and um, I attend Collegiate High at Chat State and I'll graduate this December. Um, I've written two books, Poppy at Sea when I was 11 and Secrets of Esmeralda when I was 13. I wrote both books through the summer camp, A Novel Idea. It is a month long per I think that your internet got a little spotty. We didn't hear part of what you said at the end of the last slide. Okay. Um, I'll just go back up to the like fourth point. Okay. Um, so I wrote both books through the summer camp, A Novel Idea. It is a month long program where they teach kids the basics of writing a book. In that same month, students write the first draft of their novel. In the following months outside of camp, they begin editing and in December, the books are published, and there's a book signing at Barnes & Noble. I'm working on the sequel to Secrets of Esmeralda right now. Did you guys get all that? We did. Thank you. Okay. So um, my most recent novel, The Secrets of Esmeralda, is a paranormal YA book. Um, so this is the back of the book. I was going to read it out to you so you kind of get a gist of what it's about. Um, Theodore Wood is not an average 14-year-old boy. He reads the newspaper. He doesn't care for sports. He looks for mysteries everywhere. The list could go on and on. But most importantly, he works for the Society for the Containment of the Paranormal. His current job involves a well-known house nestled on the right side of King's Court cul-de-sac. Its owner passed away two months ago, and now Teddy has been sent to clean it out. He must get rid of any small pests that might live there like goblins or a poltergeist or two. It's a baby's job, something for a less experienced member of the society to handle. He's determined to get in and out of there as quickly as possible, but Murdoch House has other ideas, and it soon has him and his colleagues firmly ensnared in a mystery that runs centuries deep. So I feel like in that too, you also get a little bit of what Teddy's um, narration style sounds like, and he amuses me, so yeah. Um, and then the next few slides are kind of um, pictures and photos and things that I took inspiration from as I was writing the book. And uh, this first one is, it's actually a painting from like the 18, early 1800s, I wanna say, somewhere in there. Um, and whenever I saw it, it just really fit the image that I saw in my head of 
one of the main villains, um, Hugo Murdoch, and he shows up, uh, like, probably in the first little bit of the book as a ghost. So, yeah, there's, and he also, there's a portrait in the house of him, hence why we framed it. So that's about how it looks like. Um, and then this is some photos I found of like old Victorian houses, kind of the interior of them, sort of how I imagined the inside of the Murdoch house to look like, which is the house, the haunted house that Teddy goes to investigate. And um, yeah, and it ends up being the kind of main setting of the book. They, other than the inside of the house and its yard is kind of where it's all set. Hey, Emery. Um, Mm -hmm. for, for some reason, we can't, there we go, it just popped on. I think that maybe the just the Wi-Fi is not too strong. So we were seeing a white screen, but now we see a picture of two ladies. Is that what we're supposed to be seeing right now? Um, yeah. Did, when did you stop being able oh, to there see? there we go. Okay. So this was the portrait. Okay. Thank and you. then these are the two pictures of the house. Awesome. And then, did, could you hear me as I was doing? Yes, going? yeah, we could hear you, but we couldn't see it. And, and so that was perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then um, the one image on the right is kind of a screenshot of the cover of the book. And this is um, the main villain. She's a ghost as well. And this is the, the one on the left is the, what we took inspiration from to do her dress and her hair. And uh, the person who did my cover art actually was a really good friend of mine. And she's also a teenager and she did the cover to my last book as well. So she was 18 whenever she did this one and 16 when she did the last one. So a little bit older than me, but in the same age range. So I think that's also really cool. And she's really talented as you can see. Um, and then lastly, I've got a picture of how I imagined the outside of the Murdoch house to look like. And I kind of imagined it a little bit more roughed up than in this picture, but it's still like really, really close to what I was imagining. So I thought that was cool. And it's actually um, Harry Truman's house, the president. So I thought that was interesting, a little weird, but yeah. Um, and then I was gonna go a little bit into the process of writing the book and how I did it. Um, so writing the first draft in one month at first seems kind of crazy, but I followed a specific plan and that's what got me to the end of it. Um, first, I estimated roughly how many words long I thought the book would be. And in this case, it was like 50,000 words around there. But um, and so from there, I divided that number into 30 days. And then that meant I had to write roughly 1,667 words in a day. I also had a rough outline of the book that I was following. So I had a loose idea of what to write every day. Um, I know that my outline wasn't really as um, super detailed as some authors like to do. Like it wasn't like a minute by minute kind of thing. It was more, um, just kind of this has to happen here, this ha has to happen here, like landmarks, I guess. Um, and I feel like that did help me a lot because I still had creative freedom and I could still move a lot of things in the outline around, but um, overall I had an idea of what I was doing and where I was going. So that kept me on track for the 30 days. And then um, once I was finished with the first draft, I went into the editing process which lasted much longer. It was several months, I think, maybe around three or four. Um, so yeah, and I would say that even though that was the longer part, it was probably also the easier part because I had an editor, but I also, um, the hard part for me was just getting it out there and into the world. And so once, cause you're really just starting from nothing, with just a bunch of blank pages. And once you have all the words in um, one place, then it's easier to go from there and kind of shape it into how you want it. Um, and then I had some pictures. Can you guys see the pictures? 
there we go. I was going to say it's a little delayed. The last one was, but it finally popped up and this one did the same thing. So it's there. That's good. So um, these are some notes that I took as I was writing the book. Um, it's the Murdoch family tree. And so the one on the left is the rough draft of it. I think I actually, I had maybe three or four versions of this. And then I think the one on the left was the very first one. And the one on the right is the very last one. And um, it is a paranormal book, but it also has a lot of history in it because the um, it's centered just kind of around a family mystery. And so the main character, Teddy, has to go back several generations and, um, you know, figure out all their backstories, you know, what happened, who died, what their life was like. Um, and a lot of these people pop up as ghosts in the book, um, either as... Um, good ones or bad ones but yeah so I had to kind of know a lot of them don't even show up in the book but I still had to know the layout and all that so and these were some of my favorite notes actually because I really like family trees I think they're interesting so yeah and then this is another one of my favorites was just the um, blueprint of what I thought the Murdoch house would look like um, in my mind which and also since it's the main setting it's good to know like what rooms the characters are in kind of how it's all laid out and all that and um maps have always interested me i'm not that brilliant a map maker but i still think it was um fun and interesting and it helped me so yeah and there's also um an upstairs to the house but I didn't really make a map of that because they're hardly up there at all. So yeah, those were some of my probably major notes that I had for it. Um, so then I thought I would go into just kind of tips on how to reach your goals as a teenager. Writing or not, I just kind of feel like they're applicable to almost anything. So um, first I would um, suggest establishing why you want to do something to begin with. Knowing why you want to do something is as important as the goal itself. This will give you fuel throughout the process and also make you realize if the goal is even something that's worth pursuing to you. Because I know a lot of the times like we'll get into our heads like, oh, I want to play, play piano. Oh, I want to, um, I don't know, just kind of stuff that will come to you on a whim. At least for me, I get a lot of crazy ideas like that and I'm like, all like fueled up for it for like those two hours but then after those two hours I'm like eh, never really wanted to do that in the first place but um like for me writing a book was different and what separated that was realizing why I wanted to do it I had it wasn't just like oh that seems like it like beyond oh that would be cool or oh I feel like I have to do that or um a justification like that because if you don't have a justification, then there's not really anything keeping you going to get to the end. So, um, for example, I realized I wanted to write my book so badly because I love the idea, especially the main character, Teddy. Um, he was a very, li he has a very lively personality and him and his entire world really ignited my imagination. And I felt a weird sense of duty to tell the story about him. And there were also um, certain images and scenes that got stuck in my head that I really loved the premise of. Like, for instance, I think one of the very first things I thought of for this book was, I just got this picture in my head of one of my main, or who became one of my main characters, um, just like levitating above this old bed in like a Victorian looking bedroom. But the girl was like very like, in modern clothes and stuff and um, just encased in this purple aura. And at the time I had like no idea of like how that would happen, how um, any of that, like I didn't really have the context of it, but I knew I really liked the image and eventually it did wind up in my story. It was, um, towards the end and so whenever things got tough and whenever I wanted to give up just looking back at my original notes and kind of reimagining what those images and stuff were it really kept my excitement up and um you know gave me 
fuel to keep on going. Um, and then also another one of my um, justifications or wanting to write this book was also, it just fit into my larger goal of wanting to be an author because hopefully this one will become one of the many books that I write. So yeah, just overall, you want to have, you want to know why you want to do something or even if you want to do it in the first place to even get anywhere. And then second, I think you need to believe in yourself, even though this is really cheesy, I still think it's necessary or um, having the determination to prove yourself wrong. Don't let your age hold you back. Being younger just means you're getting an earlier start. Like really, a lot of things, um, you're like, it's, I think it's easy at our age to just be like, oh, you know, I'm too young. Oh, that's something adults will do. It's, or maybe I'll just do it whenever I'm older. But I think um, you can get to that age and then you'll still like keep on putting it off and putting it off. Um, like, um, yeah, I think it does apply to a lot of things. But for writing specifically, I know I've met a lot of adults and a lot of, um, yeah, just that, or like, you know, in their early 20s or late 20s, 30s, so on and so forth. A lot of people like that in all age groups that have said that they really wanted to write a book. But, um, and then they just never did because they kept putting it off. And um, I think you don't want to end up in a place like that whenever you're like, in your 70s or your 80s or something and there's just been this lifelong dream of yours that you've never even like began to pursue because then you'll get to that age and you'll be like well now I'm too old so like it can go both ways really so um I think that's important to keep in mind and there's like I mean some things just logistically it's not gonna work out because like like getting your driver's license like you can't do that until you're a certain age like I get that there's stuff like that but um yeah, just I think a lot of dreams in some form, you can still pursue them even at this age. Um, then next, I would say you need to kind of start getting a plan together, which will include breaking it down into small manageable, manageable pieces. Basically, any goal will seem impossible if you focus on the top of the mountain, so to speak. For me, that meant breaking apart my book into a daily word count. So at first, 50,000 words seems really overwhelming. Like that's just kind of looking at, like if you're looking at Mount Everest, the 50,000 words is the very, very top. And I mean, obviously you're not just gonna hop from the ground up to the peak in one go. That's just, that's not how it's gonna be. But um, if you look at it step by step, it's a lot easier. And so for me, that was 1,667 words a day. So if you're looking at Mount Everest, that's like the first couple of steps that's doable. And then you just stack them on top of each other and eventually you'll get where you need to go. And I think um, you need to realistically consider how much time you can dedicate to meeting this goal per day, whatever it is. Um, and it's not a one size fits all, like for writing. Um, in the camp, there was a bunch of kids. And so I know that some kids could write like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 words a day. To me, that was insane. Like, I could never. But so it's like you got to realistically acknowledge your limits, but also push yourself. So there's like a happy little medium in that. Um, and I know some kids that only could like would write like 1,000, 1,500 words a day, somewhere in there. But by acknowledging that at the beginning, at the very beginning, that makes it a lot easier so you can plan out, um, you can plan for that and manage your expectations. And in the end, all the kids got to the same place. We all had a book by December. So that's another lesson in just like not comparing yourself to other people because your step-by-steps might be different, how you get there might be different, but at the end of the day, you'll have the same thing. So I think that's important to remember. Um, and then the hardest part, at least for me, is staying consistent with these little steps. So sometimes the finish line can seem very far away and that's when it's easiest to give up. That's why it's important to know why you wanna meet your goal in the first place. By having that reminder, it'll be easier to stick to your plan. Um, if you stay consistent in meeting your goal piece by piece, 
eventually you'll get there. If you just kind of let it fall to the wayside, then it's just you won't get there. You've got to know, you have to have the self-discipline to know that every little, every little bit will add up and eventually you'll, you'll get there. And so for me, that meant working on my book every single day. And I mean, there were times that I didn't even want to. Like, I know that like sometimes, at least I know definitely in artistic stuff, it, you can kind of get the idea in your head that it's all just like airy fairy um, inspiration. Like you'll always have it. And if you don't have inspiration, then you're not a true artist. Or if like you just don't want to do it all the time, then you're not um truly into it and I don't think that's true I mean there's just days look no matter how much I loved my book that I just sitting down and writing those 1,667 words sounded like the least appealing thing that I could come up with um or like I know my brother um my older brother plays guitar and so he practiced that practices that every day and I mean I know that there's some days where he just doesn't really necessarily want to do that but he still keeps at it and that's what um gets him to you know memorizing songs the one getting better at playing at it all of that so um and then also even if you don't completely meet your goal for the day or um something's better than nothing so like sometimes I wouldn't be able to get up to the 1667 words sometimes I could only do 500 but or like if you're playing the guitar, sometimes you don't, can't do it for an hour. Maybe you'd only do it for 30 minutes. Maybe you do it for less than that. But um, those are just like the two I, um, examples that keep coming to my head, but really anything. So even if you don't get fully to where you wanna go, something will do more good than nothing at all. And you can't fully expect perfection from yourself every day. And I think that's where a lot of people get um caught up on is like they're like oh I can't even like that's just like they get discouraged by it and um just knowing that the little bit is better than um the whole thing I think just don't get discouraged by that and just keep going that's really what matters um and then finally um, congratulate yourself and acknowledge the, the accomplishment when you finish something. Whether it's like the step-by-step -step bits that you're acknowledge, acknowledging or um, the very end goal that you finally accomplished. Um, this could seem like a given, but it's really important. I think doing this adds to your confidence and makes it easier to believe in yourself. Then it will become a loop and you can use that confidence to tackle your next goal and so on. Because one of the very first things you need to get to a goal, at least in my opinion, is the confidence. But see, then once you finish the goal, you get more confidence and it keeps on going. So um, so writing my book, my second book, was much easier because of this. After writing the goals because it's writing a book but like say you've learned to play guitar that'll be and then you've accomplished that and knowing that you can do that will give you a lot of confidence and then say your next goal is like getting into this um like at our age probably like getting into college or something even though those are kind of unrelated I think knowing that by like counting up the, your successes and um, acknowledging them and being proud of yourself and just generally applying, just knowing that you can um, get to your goals that really will help you in getting into your other ones and so on. So, um, and then I've kind of said this a little bit, but reflecting on the process. So um, think about what you learned, what you could do differently next time and what you would do the same way um, for instance, I learned a lot from writing my first book, and I carried those over into The Secrets of Esperoc. Um, like, 
I knew one thing I could in my first book I before writing it I didn't um plot out I didn't make a road map of where everything was gonna go so I just was kind of writing blindly making stuff up as I went and that was probably the hardest thing about writing that first book that's what made it really difficult for me and so I knew that the second time I should probably come in with more of a plan and so that's what I did and then something that stayed the same I knew that um the method of kind of just cutting up the words into little steps per day that was really helpful and was really successful for the first goal so I applied it to the second book as well so just overall looking back at it and all that just really helped me um, and I feel like really it applies to any goal and I think that about wraps up what I have as of right now and um, just on to the Q&A. If anybody has any questions, I would be glad to answer them. I have one, Emery. Um, so you mentioned a novel idea, the camp mm -hmm. you went to. Do you think that you would have written your first novel when you did if you had not attended that camp? Honestly, I feel like just the camp as itself is just kind of thing that like gave me the idea that I could even do it. Just like seeing that um, other kids had done it and just really, cause it just, you know, you look on, to me, I think at that age, it's just like you look at the shelf and there's all those books and you don't really necessarily think about where they came from. You're just like, okay, you know, somebody wrote that obviously, but um, not, I never really thought about it in the context in that I could do it until like I'm older. So I don't really, I feel like that really gave me the push, but um, now I'm running the, my third book now, and I feel like I'm fine without the camp. So I still think it's possible even without it, but yeah. Awesome. There's a question in the chat. Where do you get your inspiration? Ooh, so many, many places. Like um, I was showing on the slides, just like I get, I'm kind of a visual person. So I feel like I get them from um, photos, really photos for me. Cause I feel like you're just kind of with photos, you're seeing like just a screen, like a little screenshot of um, a whole entire story, but you're only seeing just that little snapshot of it. So then in my mind just kind of makes up the rest. So um, photos, um, illustrations, drawings, all that stuff. Um, sometimes just even like words, like for this one was, um, what was it? It was like um, just containment. That was one of the words. Like sometimes someone will say a word and something about it in that moment will give me like the whole story idea around it. Um, and then just random people I see on the street, like, or even like, you know, you just, my teacher gave us this idea a lot is because we were at Barnes and Noble was to go to the Starbucks at the back and just sit there and watch people. Cause the mall is a very eventful place. If you've been there once, you know that you see some crazy things. So like, you don't even really have to use your imagination very much to get like a whole like boatload of inspiration from that. So I did that a lot. Um, so yeah, those kind of things. Awesome. Does anybody else, I have more questions, but I don't want to take up the time if somebody else has a question. Does anybody else have one before I jump into another? No. Um, so my next one is how long did you want to write before you wrote your first one? Like, had you wanted to write since you could remember or was it a fairly recent desire? And you kind of touched on that a little bit, but I'm not, I might've missed it too, I'm sorry. Um. Well, see, so, I don't really remember connecting it with being like wanting to be an author. I just know that before then, um, I really liked telling stories. Like whenever, this was before I could write actually, me and my older brother, Sebastian, we were in, um, Sebastian was probably in preschool and I was like right before then. Um, and we came up with these little stories about the little pumpkin and he was um, the main character of all these adventures. 
and we I remember like cutting out cardboard and stuff and like literally making the books and then we would like narrate them to my mom who would write them out and then we would draw the pictures and stuff so I, re I remember that really vividly and then um telling my younger brother stories a lot like he just get bored of like the fairy tales because like, you've read them over that many times so you just kind of have to make something up so yeah that and then um so yeah, I really think I had wanted to be an author for a really long time. Even if I wasn't like just going around saying that, I think I just knew in my head. So yeah. That's awesome. I love that you mentioned to have your why, um, yeah. to, to be able to accomplish something. And that's something, and I don't know if, if you did it and you kind of did do it with having those different inspirations in front of you all mm -hmm. the time. But something like um, if you wanted to be a superstar soccer player, like something you could do is keep that soccer ball in front of you at all times, like where you see it. And so that's really what Emery was was talking about, having that why and keeping it visual so that it's always right there in front of you. I really liked that you mentioned that. Yeah, for me, I know I had like a bulletin board where I literally like printed out like different pictures and stuff for inspiration and put them up there. And also like just putting like my favorite books out and just being the way that's what we're aiming for. And so I think that helped me a lot. That's awesome. That kind of goes into you were mentioning to stay consistent. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned breaking it down into pieces, but then there are days obviously you just don't want to do it. How what kept you consistent? What kept you disciplined and, and really motivated? Was it your why or was it something in addition to it? I think it's a combination of the why and then also um, I had a deadline. This is another thing, having a deadline for yourself. Sometimes it's not always realistic, I know, because like depending on what the goal is, you can't like, I want to have like this awesome job or whatever. That sometimes you, that's just like life will take you that way. You can have like a loose deadline. But for me, it was actually a really tight one. Like I had to have that done by um, in the 30 days. And then, and so that really gave me my push because if you fall really behind, then it's just like you're scrambling for stuff. So it's just kind of like um, school in that way. They just consistent homework, I guess. That, that, that I know that's not exciting, but you know, I feel like it d does still give you the push. So, Definitely. Yeah. I've always heard that um, a goal without a date or a deadline is just a wish. Like you're, you're yeah. never really going to get there because you haven't put on yourself that deadline to get it done. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. A question in the chat is what is your favorite part of writing? Ooh, um, I feel like it changes day to day, but I feel like overall it's really just the characters because I really like just kind of explore this kind of sounds a little creepy but just exploring the human mind and just different personalities and stuff and it's just kind of the opportunity whenever you're writing another character to um be someone else that you're not and consider you know if you were in that situation as then what would you do and all that and it's really it's kind of like getting to know a bunch of different friends even if you've made them up so that's cool too that's awesome does anybody have any other questions for Emory? Okay, I have one more. Where can we find your books? Okay, there's on lulu.com. Can you see L-U-L-U? -L -U? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, they were selling them at Barnes & Noble for a little bit, but I'm pretty sure they sold out, so that's where I would check. Okay, awesome. Thank there's. You. You're welcome. Thank you. There's one more question in the chat. How many drafts did your books go through? Ooh, okay. So the, this is one thing I'm doing differently this next time is, um, so for Secrets of Esmeralda, I had the one solid draft and then the editing after that it just kind of blurred the lines of, so really it's probably like two major ones, but I know that this time I would like probably to do three or four drafts because I feel like that gives you a longer time to think over it and just really hone everything down. So that's what I'm doing this time. Awesome. Um, and the College Dale Library also has your books. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Are there any other questions before we end? 
Anything else you want to know from Emory? You shared so much. So the, it was amazing. And that might be one reason why they don't have questions because it, it was packed full of information. And then I asked a lot of questions too. So maybe I took some of their questions. Um, oh, did your book change a lot? I, I'm assuming that maybe he means from draft to draft. Yeah, um, it honestly it did. Like there was, um, I think it changed really the most in like the before writing section. Like I just went through like a bunch of different ideas with like, the same characters. Like originally before the main character was a paranormal investigator, he was like a side character in a different short story that I was gonna write. And so I kind of plucked him from that. And then there was one idea where he had like magical powers <laughs> and then I finally got around to like, okay, this is, he's a paranormal investigator. This is what he's doing. So it took a lot of like narrowing down and hopping around ideas to get to that, but yeah. Awesome. So I did just think of another question. So you're writing your third one and you may not have an answer for this, but do you have a, a number in mind or a goal in mind as, you know, when I'm 20, I want to have written X amount of books or anything like that? Um, I think I'm trying to do uh, keep up with the one book a year at least, though I'm thinking that's probably going to get shifted around a lot because this time around I'm going to try and do the traditional publishing, which I've not done before, so that's going to just be a whole different like learning curve mm -hmm. with that. So I'd probably really right now I think my main goal is just to try to get one of them traditionally published and then after that I think eventually that'll be what I try to settle into is one a year. Awesome. You're going to have so many books <laughs> before you know it. And that's, that's amazing. I love it. Thank you. Um, if one more question, mm -hmm. if, and you, if you don't have an answer for this, it's, it's okay. If someone wasn't sure what their goal should be, but they know they want to accomplish something, do you have any suggestions as to how somebody could find their why or or what they want to do in life? That one's a difficult one. <laughs> I think maybe it's just kind of looking at what gets you excited, mm -hmm. what really, I mean, what really matters to you in life, and kind of even this one might seem kind of dramatic, but like what impact you want to leave on the world and like how best do you think what's the best channel for that like for me I'm not really a like go around and like talk to people a lot. Like I'm very introverted shy so um to me the best way to like leave an impact on people is through writing because I feel like I'm a much better writer than I am a talker so um that was kind of I think how I ended up choosing that and then um just I wanted to leave people with like you know good messages make some give them something that sticks in the, into their mind uh gives them entertainment makes them happy for that little bit that they're reading it so that's how I got around to writing awesome that kind of leads me into another question I had written down but I forgot to ask um <laughs> You, you are a teenager and you are young to have accomplished what you've accomplished so far in your young life um is it intimidating at all to have accomplished so much at such a young age? Yeah, this is something I worry about a little bit because it's like, you feel like you got to keep on keeping the steam up because it's like, okay, you've done the one thing then. So then you feel like you constantly have to one up yourself as you go on throughout life. And I, I feel like that'll eventually die down. But like, even now, like I look back and I'm like, whoa, I was an 11 year old when I wrote that first book. 11 year old me was doing good. And I need to like step it up because it's like, or like even just within the uh, gap between writing the books, like the, between the first two was only two years, but now I'm like into three years. And it's, I know in my head that I've like done other things in those three years, but it still is like, oh, whoa, like you, maybe you're falling behind a little bit, which really isn't true, but yeah. I totally understand though. And don't forget getting ready to graduate high school in and of itself is a big deal. Not to mention, I'm sure that you've got great grades, you're going to collegiate high. So those are all accomplishments also, yeah. um, which so many people, unfortunately in the world can't say that they've done. So yeah. that that's good too. So don't, <laughs> don't discredit yourself in other areas for sure. 
Thank you. You're welcome. So did I talk enough to make you guys think of any other questions? <laughs> no? All right, well, if you think of any questions later, um, you can email me and I can get them to Emory or her mom and we can get those answered for you. Or Blake, you might run into Emory at school since you guys go to the same school even. Um, but thank you so much, Emory, for being here with us tonight and for sharing with us. It was very informative and I really enjoyed getting to hear this story behind your stories. And I look forward to getting my hands on a couple on a copy of them as well. Yeah, so thank you. You're welcome. Um, and everyone else, thank you for being here tonight. And I will go ahead and let you guys go since there aren't any more questions and you all have a wonderful evening. Yeah, thank you for coming. Bye everyone.